Okay. All right, I'll call this meeting for sorry, November the 5th, 2019. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for the November 5th, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that the minutes of the October 15, 2019 regular meeting, regular council meeting, the October 22, 2019 committee of the whole meeting, and the October 29, 2019 special committee of the whole budget and labor relations meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Gray. Um, can we break this into two motions? The committee of the whole should have a report with something in it. Do we have a report for that? In there? Uh, the minutes. Pardon? Are done? The minutes are done. Yeah. Okay. We received and approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni. Second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Councillor Gray. Just abstain. Just abstain. <clears throat> Okay, receptions and delegations, hearings, 4.1. We have uh, with us CFO Ganita at Pasico, Pasico Hardy & Company tonight uh, to present the 2018 Consolidated Financial Statements and the Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Schedule. So you want to come forward and... And I'll let you have the floor. To keep my comments brief, so I'll go very quickly. These are consolidated financial statements, which means that every amount reported is a consolidation of all accounts, funds, as well as control entities and proportionate shares of government partnerships, inter fund and intercompany balances, and transactions have been eliminated. In 2018, the uh, council incorporated the budgets of the arena pool and hall into the town's financial plan and previously they're separate budgets so these revenues and expenses have been included in the core government amounts for 2018 where previously they were reported as controlled entities the controlled entities are the and municipal developers the government partnerships are the physician fund the library district rec, airport Planning district and runs. Statement of responsibility is the first page there. And it says that the consolidated financial statements are the responsibility of management and were thus prepared entirely by me in accordance with Canadian Charter of Professional Accounts and Public Sector Accounting Board standards. And the auditors, PKHC Chartered Professional Accounts. Have their opinion there that they'll present later after I'm done presenting the financial statements. So we'll turn it to page six, consolidated statement of financial position. Cash and temporary investments went down from 2.4 million to 1.6 of the town took on several large capital projects for which financing will be arranged in 2019. Much of that cash is held in reserves and by government partnerships and controlled entities. Amounts receivable went up by a million dollars. Uh, there's some grants receivable from CWWF and Manitoba uh, Water Services Board for utility capital projects that began in 2019 put the money in 2019. Portfolio investments went down because the uh, district rec redeemed its one-year term deposits. Deposit accounts payable and accrued liabilities and their liabilities increased by 400,000 due to December school tax levy paid in January. Long-term debt of dementias for the municipal office, wellness center, firefighter equipment, and Ross and Hayes Street lift stations, total of seven million. 
and deferred government transfers is from federal and provincial funding repayable if the wellness center is closed before December 31, 2025. Under non-financial assets, the tangible capital assets is the net book value of all the towns, tangible capital assets as well as those of controlled entities and proportionate shares of government partnerships. Next page, page seven, consolidated statement of operations. The first few lines there are fairly straightforward. Other revenue midway down is that includes uh, cash donations, contributed capital assets, penalties and interest, amortization of prepaid local improvement levies, supplier rebates, and gain from increase in share of partnership. Water sewer revenue is up from 1.3 million to 2.5 because of 1.1 million grants from CWWF and MWSB. Grants province of Manitoba includes the municipal operating, urban policing, MRIP, handyman operating, library operating. And it was higher in 2017 because of the $1.5 million for the wellness center brought into revenue after passing the first mile stone. The town needed to operate the wellness center for a certain number of years, otherwise a certain percentage of the grants would have to be paid back to the province. So the town passed the first milestone in 2017. So that portion of the grants that we're doing for the wellness center is brought into revenue because it doesn't have to be paid back to the province if the wellness center has been closed. Uh, grants other includes the federal gas tax and municipal contributions to partnerships. And again, it was higher in 2017 because of 1.1 million for the wellness center. Under expenses, so protective services increased 100,000 in 2017. The RCMP were down some staff in 2018, back up to full complement, so the increase was due to that. Environmental health services increased 140,000 due to demolition trade. Landfill burn and recycling tonnage fee increased. Water and sewer services was up because of the state of emergency and more connections. Next page, consolidated statement of change in net financial assets, page eight, shows the change in net debt and, and the bottom amount there, million dollars represents fact that the, the town will need to raise revenues in the future to cover present liabilities. Page nine, consolidated statement of cash flows, shows the cash coming in and going out. So from operations, the 1.5 million cash came in. Capital transactions, 2.2 million was used to acquire tangible capital assets. Under financing transactions, so the, the proceeds of long term debt was for the, the CBAs, and, and then all the debt was paid down 308,000. So the overall, that explains the total decrease in cash and temporary investments of 790,000. Notes to the financial statements start on page 10. The, the, the province provides some standard wording for some of the notes that are standard from municipality to municipality, but a lot of the notes are unique to this municipality and require professional judgment as to what needs to be disclosed.
significant accounting policies that are reporting entity includes the various controlled entities and proportionate share of government partnerships that are listed there. Basis of accounting says that the financial statements are prepared using the accrual basis, not the cash basis. Tangible capital assets at the bottom of page 11. The costs are amortized to expense over an estimated useful lives. That's new with public sector accounting standards that came in in 2009 before that municipal municipalities and other organs of government never re recognized capital assets to a limited extent. So amortization spreads the costs of the assets over the estimated useful lives. It's never recorded before the set. Page 12 at the bottom, revenue recognition. Government transfers are recognized in the financial statements when the transfer is authorized and eligibility criteria are met except when and to the extent stipulations that are transferred to drugs and obligation that meets the definition of a liability. Unfortunately, that particular standard is controversial and there's inconsistencies between provinces and even between municipalities and auditors as to how to interpret what is a liability when it comes to government grants towards capital assets. So I've interpreted the fact that for the wellness center, for example, the, the agreement says the town needs to operate the wellness center for a certain number of years or else so much of the grant needs to be paid back to the province and then another threshold where a lesser amount of the grant I've interpreted that as a, a liability until the town passes those various milestones and then once it's passed the milestone and then brought in a proportion of the grant into revenue. Other municipalities might interpret the standard differently. So I spoke to the lady that actually developed the standard and she said unfortunately consistency in application by the goal that was not achieved. Top of page 13, measurement uncertainty, and it says there's estimates and assumptions involved in various parts of the financial statements. Note eight on page 15 shows it starts off with a pre retirement bonus entitlement. See that the eighty thousand was earned in during the year twenty thousand was paid out and thirty seven thousand was relinquished upon termination of employment. So for those employees that leave before they've worked the full ten years and they lose their entitlement. Note fourteen on page seventeen accumulated surplus. Total consolidated surplus of 28,000 consists of uh, 24,000 in tangible, 24 million in tangible capital assets and 1.3 million in reserve funds and 1.6 million in consolidated entities. And so the old nominal surplus in the general operating fund is 898,000 and the old nominal surplus in the utility operating fund is 86,000. So those nominal surpluses were all that municipalities saw before the days of public sector accounting standards. Note 15 on page 18 lists some of the commitments the town has with the Government of Canada for Police and Service until 2032. And 
with the neighboring municipality for the municipal services agreements that comes to the end of 2019. Page 22, there's a new no contingent assets. Municipalities are required to disclose if they have any possible assets arising from existing conditions or situations involved in uncertainty, where the uncertainty will be resolved with a future event, not within the public sector entities control. So the last paragraph there shows asset that the town has. And then you note know, 24 related party disclosures. If the municipality has any related parties, then it's required to disclose balances and transactions with those parties. So it was a big disclosed on page 23 at the top there. Turning to page 24, consolidated shareholder tangible capital assets. Under cost, the second line, the addition is year to year to vehicles, equipment, and furniture, and cool. Town van and truck, all food, labor, and sound system, and rise signage disposals included the old town van and truck. Under assets under construction, was the arena and pool condition assessments, conditions under roads and streets, included the uh, 12th and 3rd curb gutter and paving, river road paving, 13th Avenue North curb gutter and paving, and Westwood Road Access Road, and the additions under water and sewer infrastructure, included the uh, completion of the 6th Avenue lift station upgrade, the start of the well control building. Well, number four development and, and water treatment plant upgrade. The next page 25 consolidated schedule of revenues, and the page after that consolidated schedule of expenses. Just give further detail of the various types of revenues and expenses. Turning to page 28, the consolidated statement of operations by program. I, I feel that this uh, statement is very useful because it shows the total revenues and the total expenses for each program area and the net cost. So you can see that the general government had, has a surplus of 3.8 million, but that's due to the fact that property taxes and grants in lieu of 4.4 million uh, to cover all the other areas. Protective services, you can see cost just under a million dollars net at the bottom of the page. Transportation services, 900,000 net. Environmental health services, 600,000 net. And of course, these amounts include amortization, which was never included before public sector accounting standards. So, uh, these uh, amounts encompass more of what it actually costs to provide these programs. Amortization was never considered before. Now we can see what it actually costs to provide the programs. The next page, page 29. Recreation and cultural services uh, cost 1.6 million, and 2017 showed a surplus because of the funding being brought in. But if, if you take out the 2.6 million dollars of funding for the wellness center, then it would have shown a 1.6 million dollar deficit similar to 2018. 
water and sewer services shows a million dollar surplus compared to only 100,000 last year because of the CWWF and MWSB grants for utility projects. The next page, Schedule 5, shows the same numbers as the previous two schedules, except categorized differently. Um, the expenses are by what's called object instead of by the type. So you can see that, uh, and it also shows core government versus controlled entities and government partnerships. So you can see that personal personnel costs 2.9 million, contracted out services cost 2.2 million. Contract services includes not only subcontractors, but things like property taxes and rentals and insurance and advertising and travel costs. Amortization, 1.6 million. Amortization is not a cash outlay in the year, but it is an accrual expense. And as I mentioned before, the core government numbers are higher in 2018 and 2017 with moving the pool hall and arena from being reported as control entities to be included in the core government. Page 31 is the schedule change in sort of fund balances and transfers from the general operating fund to the equipment and replacement were 153,000. 150,000 was budgeted by council, but 3,000 was from the work crew truck uh, rental that council decided to put into the equipment replacement reserve as well. So, equipment replacement, 62,000 was used towards the new van and truck. And the fire truck replacement reserve, 13,000 was used towards the personal protective equipment. The recreation facilities reserve, 28,000 was used towards the wellness center uh, condition analysis. Page 32. Federal gas tax funding was used for sidewalks, <coughs> paved area streets and roads, and the utility replacement reserve was used for Virgin Factory North Paving Water Plant Distribution Pump and the Water Supply Emergency. Pages 33 to 35 are in the schedule financial position and the operations for just the utility that the public utilities board requires. Schedule 10, page 36, is reconciliation of the financial plan to the budget. So the financial planning that council approves or early on in the year is not the same as, is not prepared in the same, with the same accounting principles as the public sector accounting standards. So this converts the financial plan prepared according to the municipal act standards to the public sector accounting standards and methods. So the financial plan in general, financial plan utility are budgeted at zero, but then there's various adjustments. Under the amortization column uh, transfers to capital 
that are expenditures under the municipal act but are not expenses under the public sector accounting standards need to be taken out and replaced with amortization that, that is not included in the financial plan. In the interest column, the debenture payments are not, the principal portion is not an expense under the public sector accounting standards, so only the interest is. And then transfers to and from reserves or surpluses are not expenses or revenues under the public sector accounting standards, so those need to be taken out. And then the budgets of the consolidated entities added in to arrive at the public sector accounting standards budget. There was a whole point public sector accounting standards came in that the province would change the municipal act to be in accordance with public sector accounting standards, but unfortunately it hasn't happened and probably won't for a long time yet. Deals of higher levels of government tend to turn very slowly. Schedule 11 on page 37 and Schedule 12 on page 38 are just analyses of the property tax receivable and levies. Very straightforward. Page 39, Schedule 13. Schedule general operating fund expenses is just the general operating fund. The schedule of expenses that we looked at earlier, Schedule 3, was consolidated all the funds together and other entities, but this is just the general operating fund. The very last page, reconciliation of annual surplus, so does the same kinds of adjustments to convert the surplus under the or deficit under the municipal act to the surplus or deficit <coughs> under public sector accounting standards. So that was all that I was going to highlight for the consolidated financial statements. So on the agenda is the schedule of individuals whose remuneration is 50,000 or more is required by the Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Act. And that's just a simple listing of all the employees of compensation over 50,000. So. And then my part. All right, mm -hmm. anyone has any questions? Any questions for Terry? Thank you. everyone. I'm Deanna Chess from PKHC Chartered Professional Accountants. If I could just get you to go to the beginning of the Consolidated Financial Statements. We'll start with the Independent Auditor's Report. And for those of you who might remember, the report is quite a bit different from how it used to look. The opinion is now at the beginning of the report, whereas in the past it was always the last paragraph. So it starts off with the opinion basis for opinion, the responsibilities of management and those charged with governance, and our responsibility as auditors. So we have audited the consolidated financial statements of the Town of Swan River, which comprise the consolidated statement of financial position as at December 31st, 2018, and the consolidated statements of operations, change in net financial assets, and cash flows for the year then ended and notes to the consolidated financial statements, including the summary of significant accounting policies. In our opinion, the accompanying consolidated financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the town as at December 31st, 2018, and the result of its operations and its cash flows for the year then ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards. Under basis for opinion, we conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Our responsibilities under those standards are further described in the auditor's responsibilities for the audit of the consolidated financial statement section of our report. We are independent of the town in accordance with the ethical requirements that are relevant to our audit 
of the consolidated financial statements in Canada, and we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with these requirements. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of these consolidated financial statements in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to enable the preparation of consolidated financial statements that are free from material misstatements, whether due to fraud or error. Our objectives are to obtain reasonable assurance about whether the consolidated financial statements as a whole are free from material misstatement, whether due to fraud or error, and to issue an auditor's report that includes our opinion. Reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but it is not a guarantee that an audit conducted in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards will always detect a material misstatement when it exists. So that is the independent auditor's report for the consolidated financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018. We also have an auditor's report for the schedule of individuals whose remuneration is $50,000 or more as required by the Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Act. So we have audited the Town of Swan River's compliance as at December 31st, 2018 with the Province of Manitoba Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Act. Management is responsible for compliance with the disclosure requirements of the Act and for such internal control as management determines is necessary to ensure compliance. Our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance based on our audit. We conducted our audit in accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. Those standards require that we plan and perform an audit to obtain reasonable assurance whether the Town of Swan River complied with the disclosure requirements of the Act. Such an audit includes examining on a test basis evidence supporting compliance, evaluating the overall compliance with these requirements and where applicable, assessing the accounting principles used and significant estimates made by management. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. In our opinion, the schedule of individuals whose remuneration is $50,000 or more for the year ended December 31st, 2018 is prepared in all material respects in compliance with the Public Sector Compensation Disclosure Act. And as Terry mentioned, Previously, that the list of employees that the remuneration, the remuneration is over 50,000 is listed. And I just want to point out starting January 1st, 2019, that threshold has been increased to $75,000. So for the 2019 audit, um, instead of having about 15 employees listed, the list will be uh, quite short and we'll only have about a few employees listed for next year. They finally uh, changed that threshold after many, many, many years, before my time, anyway, uh, $50,000 is not the same as it was 30 years ago. So they finally increased that threshold. Okay, so moving on. We also have a supplementary audit report to present as well. This responsibility relates to our audit of the consolidated financial statements of the town of Swan River for the year ended December 31st, 2018, on which we issued our report dated November 5th, 2019. This report has been prepared in accordance with Canadian standard on related services, reports on supplementary matters arising from an audit or review engagement. Our responsibility is to report on the supplementary matter. Accordingly, we do not express an audit opinion or a review conclusion on the supplementary matter. So in response to the other reporting responsibility, we have reviewed the accounting procedures and systems of control employed by the municipality and report that in our opinion, such, such procedures and systems are adequate to preserve and protect the assets of the municipality. The funds of the municipality have, to the best of our knowledge and belief, been dispersed only under authority granted by an act of the legislature or under authority of resolution or bylaw of the municipality made under the authority of an act of the legislature. No discrepancy in the administration of the affairs of the, of the municipality came to our attention in the course of our examination and in our opinion, there are no other matters that should be brought to the attention of council. And the last document I'll go through is the audit findings letter. 
This letter just uh, has been prepared to assist you with the review of the consolidated financial statements of the town of Swan River. Just states the status of the audit. We have completed the audit of the consolidated financial statements with the exception of the following items. Receipt of a signed representation letter by management, which I received this evening. Completing our discussions with council, which we're doing right now and obtaining evidence of council's approval of the consolidated financial statements. Once these items have been completed, we will date and sign our auditor's report. There are no significant risks identified in the audit this year. And there are significant <laughs> matters arising. There were no changes to the audit plan. We have not identified any other significant matters that we wish to bring to your attention at this time. There were no significant difficulties encountered during our audit. The significant accounting policies used by the entity are outlined in note two of the consolidated financial statements and there were no significant changes in accounting policies. We did not identify any alternative accounting policies that would have been more appropriate in the circumstances. We did not identify any significant accounting policies in controversial or emerging areas. The following significant estimates or judge our judgments are contained in the financial statements, allowance for doubtful accounts, value of inventory, accrued liabilities, deferred revenue, book value of capital assets, and the landfill culture liability. Based on audit work performed, we are satisfied with the estimates made by management. We did not identify any financial statement disclosures that are particularly significant, sensitive, or require significant judgments that we believe should be specifically drawn to your attention other than the following. The deferred government transfers described in note 13. We accumulate any uncorrected misstatements identified and communicate them to management. We did not identify any misstatements during our audit and did not request management to, to correct any misstatements. We did not identify any control deficiencies that in our judgment would be considered significant deficiencies. And in a separate communication, uh, we had requested a number of written representations from management in respect to their responsibility for the preparation of the consolidated financial statements. And we do not identify any other matters to bring to your attention at this time. And we, we would like to thank management and staff for the assistance they provided to us during the audit. And that's everything I have to say. Okay. Any questions to uh, Diana at all? <coughs> Councilor Gray, uh, just in terms of the utility, and I'm not sure who, I'm, who it's directed to, so now you can probably help me. Um, am I misreading this, or if we eliminate the capital transfer, essentially what we have is about a fifty thousand dollar loss in the utility? Is that right? Take off the capital transfer because I don't see any capital unless I'm missing something here. Page 35. I, I'm sorry, schedule nine. Thank you. I see the operating expenses being 1.475 million odd, and I see the operating revenues being about 1.424 billion. Is that accurate? Yes, in, in, in fact, uh, the public utilities, uh, I mentioned that the accounting standards under the Municipal Act are not the same as the accounting standards under PSAP. The Public Utilities Board has its own accounting standards, so there are three accounting standards in, that affect municipalities. And in fact, I need to prepare a, a Public Utilities Board Schedule 9, which converts the PSAP Schedule 9 to the Public Utilities Board standards, and one of the things that is involved in the conversion is to remove the capital grants. So, yes, the, from Public Utilities Board point of view, the 1.1 million that's revenue under PSAP is not revenue under PUB standards. So. For PUB, that 1.1 million is taken out and replaced with amortization of grants. Okay. And, and there's actually a, a, a note that shows shows that the very last note on page 23 
Note 25, the uh, Public Utilities Board regulates the rates charged by all water and sewer utilities. P PUD has the authority to order any order of the utility to adopt prescribed accounting <coughs> policies. PUDs prescribed accounting policies on tangible capital assets and government transfers right. do not meet the recommendations of PSAP. And so at the bottom there, it shows that uh, the uh, what PUD views as revenue is the amortization of capital grants. So PUD would take out the 1.1 million and replace it with 72,000 of revenue. But for our purposes, um, I just want to, uh, it's all fantastic, except for me. I, I, I just want to figure out at this point, we're about breaking even or we're losing money or we're, we're still profitable in our utility. Because the, the whole issue for me is do we need to expedite the PUB application for a rate increase or are we good for a little while? That's, that's all I really want to get to. Well, the rate increase needs to be in shortly. Okay. According so we're to what we're in 2016. <clears throat> okay. So we're under. We're starting to get underwater. That's what I'm. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. We're still. We are still able to transfer 224,000 to reserve. So uh, we we had a, a zero under the municipal tax way of doing things in the utility because we to the policy of transferring to reserve whatever surplus is in the utilities. Okay. We actually have a surplus of 224000 that we transfer to reserve. Okay. But as costs keep increasing, the surplus will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so we have some duty to get a rate increase to keep up with the costs in the future. Okay. I have um, two or three other Small questions, Your Worship. Yeah, go ahead. Investment income in 2017 was 38,000. In 2018, we budgeted 22,000, which is a reduction of two third or of a third. But we actually made 50,661. It seems a little unusual that we would project we were going to lose money, lose a third of the investment income, but actually make. Uh, and again, I'm not that great at math, but my figures would say we're about 50% higher than we were the previous year, and we were projecting to be six, like a third, 35% less. Why? Um, the investment income on these consolidated financial statements includes all the various entities that are consolidated, and, and there's one entity that has a significant amount of cash uh, being a physician retention recruitment fund and so uh, a large portion of that interest is from that entity. Okay, but my real question is because we're going through the budgeting process, should we project, well I don't know what we have in 2019, but in 2020 should we project a $50,000 revenue or should we project a $22,000 revenue? Or thirty-eight thousand dollars. The town's budget is only for the town itself, uh, not for any of the other entities. So the town would not be budgeting fifty thousand because that's a consolidated figure. The town would be budgeting only for its own investment income. Okay, I think I got that. And what about the same thing with the other revenue? Right below it. I'm just confused by the huge increases of the numbers. And the Which investment. page are you on? Now? Uh, page seven, same place. Investment income, and then right below it is is other revenue. Well, the other revenue includes <coughs> the gain from uh, from the town's share of the doctor recruitment fund increasing. Increased so that we didn't full, spend the money we took out. So, so the included in that other revenue is 40,000 gained from increasing the share of the physician. We took it back to $60,000, and that's that's 
the bulk of it is custom. Okay. There was one last but I'm amazed that your recall, sir. And page 29 is the uh, schedule for. The, you explained it, but it, I just forgot that I wanted to make a note. The, the actual loss on that or the actual expenditure on that total expenditure on that was one point six million dollars in both years. But we didn't include one of the expenditures in two thousand seventeen, which was that. So under, under recreational and cultural under recreation and cultural services, uh, two thousand seventeen showed a seven hundred and fifty thousand surplus because uh, two point six million dollars that's what it was. Of the funding for that the, was the revenue. revenue center was brought into revenue. If there we that are. wasn't there, then it would have shown one point six million dollar deficit. Right. That's what it was. They just had forgotten that when you were talking with the reading and they didn't make So that's been consistent. Thank you. Yeah, that that preferred government transfers as I mentioned is controversial and one of the biggest objections is Huge surpluses in the years that the money's brought in, right? And the, the province of Ontario, for example, requires all the levels of government to defer and amortize the capital grants over the same period as capital asset. The cost of the capital assets is amortized, and I, I think that would make sense. But unfortunately, there are powerful players involved that have said that. That, that the deferred government transfers is not a liability. And so it's kind of a mess because there's no consistency across Canada. And there's differences of opinion between provinces, there's differences of opinion between powerful players. And I guess because of those differences in opinion, Public sector accounting standards board said just left it open to however you want to interpret it. To be clear, just one of the information so that when we go for a budgeting process, yeah. I don't agree. No, they're all very good questions, and uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Ms. Jess, for your presentation and your firm for doing a good job. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Kadita makes things easy for you. Oh, yeah. uh, and, uh, and Terry, on behalf of the council, we thank you for your good work and diligent work that you do for us and the whole administration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 6, 6 6.1, resulted the letter from the Office of the Fire Commissioner regarding the fire protection workshop for CAOs and elected officials to be received as information moved by Councillor Antonio, second by Councillor White. This is uh, obviously you see the letter that invites elected officials and CO to attend workshops. I think some of the members of the council have done this in the past. So you have a couple dates that are choose from and we'll probably let uh, the CO know if that's something you're interested in. So any further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Result of the letter from the Deputy Minister of Justice and the Deputy Attorney General dated October 17, 2019, regarding the 2019 Urban Policing Grant be received as information moved by Councillor Memorials, seconded by Councillor Lentoni. Again, this is the uh, grant that we'll be receiving. Uh, I was a little bit 
disappointed myself to see that that wasn't increased, at least by the cost of living, about 2%. So I'll have to, I guess, speak with the minister about that. <coughs> Any discussion? You've already noted it. It's exactly the same amount, despite the fact that our policing costs are going up at least 7% of how we want. Yeah. So I think this has to be something that we need to discuss at the AMM with the, with the minister. Further discussion? All in favor? Abstain? I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I'm fine with it. I mean, it's accepted for information. For right. What are we going to do with it? <clears throat> I guess we'll turn it down. Uh, no, we will not be doing that. I didn't think so. <clears throat> Resolved the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, second by Councillor Friesen. Questions to Mr. Poole? Councilor uh, Morio. Um, Mr. Poole, in the engineering section under transportation where you got the 3rd Street South and 13th Avenue South design and estimate, what are we looking f to do on 3rd Street South? Like, I thought the base was okay and it was just to do a look at actually yeah. curving gutting. That's still the title <coughs> of the project, 3rd Street 13th. There'll still be a little bit of work grading to be 113, so I wouldn't take it out, but uh, But there's no major digging like we did on 12th? Not on 13th, or on 3rd Street, we uh, yeah. So I've given the CFO the, a detailed estimate for each of those projects, and it would be a kind of a development side during our budget, our budget uh, deliberations. <clears throat> and then on so for clarity on Third Street South, how far are we looking to go down to Hill Avenue or? I've got an option for pricing to go right to the highway and then just one block to where the development ends. Anything correct? No. Okay, Councillor White. Uh, relative to the contact with the Reeve of the RM, I'm assuming it's the Reeve of Sun Valley West. Is on the request for additional private water search for municipal water and then meeting with Cliff Panner regarding his uh, his approach. Can you expand on that, please? Uh, I'm just having a meeting with the business owner in town regarding it, its future water sources, basically. So I, I'm obliging him with a meeting just to see what he has to say. <clears throat> a future water source for? Municipal consumption. Councilor Gray. I just wanted to follow up on that because I thought, and I can't remember who that I we did the whole meeting or at last council meeting, but I thought we talked about terminating our agreement with respect to water supply. Yes, I have a report that's coming to the next council meeting about it. Um, about, about a series of uh, different agreements that are coming up and what options are available to us for the rural water. Uh, we have to effectively give a three-year notice, I right. think it is. So um, we're, we're already in the middle of uh, an automatic uh, five extension, so we can either shut it off at the end of the five or we can we, to, to uh, be able to uh, do a cancel at any time, we have to give a three-year notice. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's coming to At the committee, we're going to review that at committee of the whole. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to move in next committee of the whole, but that's one thing I would like to speak about. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to get it on uh, for information oh, tonight, it just didn't happen. It's fine. I, I just, I, I meet that. Yeah. Um, secondly, um, under engineering, we had a discussion to the committee of the whole for budget against right? about uh, the fact that the um, entirety of our building, we were to use part of the building for hazard, home, home, household hazardous waste. But we're not going to do that. We're going to now, in fact, be buying a trailer or using a trailer and therefore allowing the RM, the entirety of <coughs> that building. Is that what's happening? It's, it's definitely not happening we're, we're looking into that we're still in discussions with their contractor to see if we can fit in there in the case that he can't operate with us in there we'll either have to you know, mark our territory off and use it 
or discuss with the, uh, our partners on commercial rent regarding the recycled bill. <clears throat> yeah, I missed most of right? because it says we'll be looking at altering a 53 foot trailer instead of using the recycling building. That is that is the option. We're just well, that's it's not, not, not a green light. Okay. So we're we're still in discussions with that contractor, but that's just an option that we're getting pricing into basically. And have we spoken with the municipality about that, about the fact that if we can't use our own space, they're going to have to Yeah. Pay for it. Derek, okay. like I, called, I called the Reeve this week and informed him of that. Okay. And what did he say? He didn't say okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought he would say okay. <laughs> Was there silence or, or loudness? He didn't say no either. Okay. Um, and I deflected it basically <clears throat> okay. to share his reasons. So when are we going to address shared services with them? Purchase services, I guess. Yeah, well, they're, 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 they're not, they're, they're purchasing. That's where the report is coming. Oh, right. Out about in, our in, next in, count. At next count, okay. Yeah. Well, then I definitely want I'm, I'm fortunate to be involved. Definitely be involved with that because yeah. I have are strong you, feelings. Did you say you're going to be here? I'll be in slim form. But right. if there's anything that you can add or if we can add you into the meeting, we'd be appreciated. Well, I'm going to, uh, that, that, normally yeah. I, I don't try and, you know, you know, yeah. I find it difficult and so do the members, but that's one where I have strong feelings. And I'll, uh, I'll try to have them posted, you know. Lots of things. Okay, that's good. I just, I, it's all connected. It's all connected. That's yeah. good. My last point, Mr. Mayor, because there was some suggestion about uh, doing some own use things, I think we, we need to relook at procurement where we're bidding in a competitive bidding process. I think we need to look at how that process works. I think that needs to be added at some point to a committee of the whole because I think it's a unique proposition at that point and I think we need to be dis we have to think out what we want to do in terms of doing that because I don't think it works well if we don't think about it now as opposed to we get into the middle of a competitive bidding thing in April and then we go oh my god what are we doing now yeah. I think we need to be clear what stay within our advanced procurement bylaw for guidelines What's that? And stay within our own guidelines. With oh, the we, we need to relook at it because we never turned our attention to it. So I think we know that's coming up. So we should turn our attention to the fact that if there's an internal bid, how does that work? Does that mean, for instance, that council becomes the, uh, you know, takes the recommendations and becomes the arbiter, or does it? What does it mean? I think we need to look at that. Is all I'm saying. I, I, that's the other thing that came from this and your previous report. Those were the only things, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Council Freeze. Uh, two things. The update sent to Chief Fedorchuk for parking bylaw review. What's that about? Uh, I think the first reading is on later this meeting. Okay. And the second thing is um, we have posts out at the big circular flower bed at the cemetery. Could you get one of your guys to yellow tag it so that when the snow does come, they don't plow over the new? Curbing. Yeah. We had it there last year, but then we took it down for the summer and it'd be nice if it was back up, just so they know not to wreck it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Further discussion? Questions? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. 7.21 result of the Swan River Protective Services report for October 2019 be accepted as information. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor Gray? <coughs> um, am I missing? Did we, well, I was, you know, I, I, I've been at most meetings, but did we at some meeting pass the process for dealing with? <laughs> fines and stuff or are we still working on that we're still waiting for chief of our truck to come forward okay because we've got a bunch of violation numbers excellent and, and especially the handicap ones have become much more sense of that but we're kind of toothless bulldogs aren't we like yes. we're growling people but you know we can't actually do anything the administration understands the uh, importance of it chief of our truck is coming forward voluntarily Okay, yes. it's all good. Councillor Morial. Um, with that, I believe Chief Rodorchuk has 
finished and prepped the draft bylaw for review for administration um, and then to be at, well, potentially at the next cow meeting for us to to look at. Okay. All in favor? Scary. <clears throat> Reports. Council. I'll start with Councilor Gray. Um, we have a discussion coming up on why, so I'm not going to revisit that issue. Um, I'm sure Councilor Freeze will give a much more in-depth report on the uh, if you, Deputy Mayor of Mentoni on the Manitoba 150 meeting. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm waiting to hear your report because, quite candidly, the report I went to felt like we were going backwards the whole meeting. It was the most unhelpful meeting I've ever, well, not the most, but it's one of the most unhelpful meetings I've ever been at. It was um, a little bit surreal. So, Two of our partners, sensible partners, um, wanted to share but said that there was no way we could possibly in the Swan River Valley spend more than $100,000 on Manitoba 150 celebrations. And I don't know where they've been shopping, but that seems unlikely to me. I think we can spend more than that. We should spend more than that, um, firstly. Um, secondly, um, they were not their opinion was they were not going to be in a position, well, one of them said this and the other went to sort of nod in the agreement, that they were not going to be in a position to actually put together the grant applications for themselves if they went off on their own to partner. The third thing they said was that um, assuming we could get it all together and there was $30,000, their position was that their municipalities should contribute $0 but that is, they should go and get other community groups to put in the money to match the 70% that the province would pay. Um, uh, uh, candidly, I was dumbfounded. I mean, it, it, it is impossible for me to believe that we were going to be partners in that process because it was, it, there was nothing, there was no, there was no value in the partnership. It was us doing everything and carrying the ball and sharing decision making. On top of which they actually um, had really restrictive views on what should be done um, and actually voted or worked against two or three pretty major things that I would have thought, for instance, um, increasing the, the Rodeo, and one would have thought those communities would have been big on that in terms of bringing perhaps a big name actor that there's United or something like that, something that would hammer that particular successful event. Um, and so I, I, I don't know exactly. I know, man, I, I know administration had another meeting, and I'm sure Patty was there, and, and Charles and carried the, the, the ball for us. Uh, the school division was, I don't know, strangely silent in our meeting. Maybe they had more to say in yours. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what was said there because I'm assuming that we're doing our own and trying to work with them as best we can because there is not much else you can do with that group. Um, it was surreal. That's the only way it is. Just as a, as a response, I've invited Patty to come and uh, speak on Mantle 150 in section. It's 8.5. Okay, well, I won't, I won't belabor it other than to say it was. Uh, I actually broke away from court to come and watch, and uh, I'm not so sure that was a great use of my time. Anyway, there are two other things. Um, oh, Patty's here, and I, well, there's three things or four things. People have called me, but someone I met thinks I'm going to deal with directly with management because I don't think there's any purpose. And one of them is um, a proposal from at least two people that we consider a ramp um, the side, instead of going all the way around and ramp up from here uh, for the um, entrance to here. Um, there are innumerable people as we all know who are unhappy with the structure of putting the front door in a place. Just, We're gonna do that. just as a quick answer, I 
suspect that's too short a ramp. This slope would be too steep okay. under Manitoba law. So, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I, I raise it only if you can consider it and see if there's a way of doing it, engineering it anyway, even with a couple of bends, because I've had, like I said, a number of yeah. more senior people say to me, they don't want to have to walk all the way around, uh, and way around the ground. Uh, and so I raise that. Um, the other thing that people have raised with me, and, and there's a couple other things, but one is changing our, it was public skating to Wednesday night, or the Tooney pool or something, so that they're in the same night as public skating. There were two people who called me about that. I raise it with you only because it's been raised with me. Personally, I'm not going to the Tooney swim, and I'm not going to public skating. So I, don't care. I mean, I do care, but not for me personally. Um, there were, we had a couple of some other meetings, but I, they'll all be covered by other groups of persons. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilor White. In, in no particular order, uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni, uh, Councilor Mario, myself, MLA Wolchuk, uh, CEO Kroll, and Staff Sergeant uh, Campbell, and Sergeant Hanson all met for an uh, informal meeting based on a number of concerns by the community as a whole and uh, relative to theft and vandalism and be the main topics and I think there's a bottom line is the RCP are very concerned about it. They're, they're looking for options, they're looking at ways to deal with it. Have they been as successful as we like? I don't think that that's, uh, they'd be happy with the success either but to suggest for a moment that they're not concerned is not fair and they have plans. Uh, I can't share the plans because we're on TV. So they have some plans that they hope will be working. They're looking at solutions and if, uh, if there was a bottom line, I would think that we as a community have to report suspicious activity. See cars going down in the wrong places at the wrong time. We write those things down and let them know because then they can establish patterns. So I can tell you also that Staff Sergeant uh, Campbell is coming to our next committee as a whole where he'll share hypothetically with Council some of their plans. And uh, they certainly are being proactive. It's fast enough for the town. I don't think so. Fast enough for me? I don't think so. But it's, I think they're going as fast as they can. So uh, to uh, just to accolade so that the RCMP are very worried too, and uh, hopefully things will get better in that world. Uh, a safe house meeting, the safe house ladies are working so hard trying to get a, you know, a place for people in need, and uh, they've been on that for 11 years, and uh, I will stay optimistic for them. I went to Camperville uh, to meet with uh, the First Nation community there relative to personal care homes, similar interests and similar concerns to our communities, need to see other other communities are looking at solutions. And I'd like to just uh, casually announce uh, casual, the, our third local uh, graduate of our, of our valley, Dr. Kazakoff, is uh, starting work in there and taking patients, as I understand it right now, at the primary care clinic. And another local person, uh, Rachel Dahl, a nurse practitioner, a Swan Valley girl, is also working here. So it's nice to see the local people coming back to the community. And uh, it should mean they're going to stay. Uh, congratulations to our football team for winning the province, our high school football team, what a compliment to those. Went undefeated, I think uh, 10 and 0, 9 and 0. I watched for 10 minutes, they got four touchdowns, I went back to watch volleyball. They, uh, they were just dominating, it was so neat to see. I saw a seed uh, similar to my counselor and neighbor here, uh, Dick Walker Way, we talked about a year or two ago. Uh, Dick was, uh, in my mind, one of the more important members of our community and it'd be nice if we could uh, identify and perhaps name a street. Dick Walker Street, Dick Walker Way, and I'm not sure we do that as name the street as a whole, or we put one of those little signs on the top. I'm sure there are many deserving people, but uh, Dick was one of the special people who was here since day one in our community. So that's it, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilor Friesen. I had a uh, community security meeting last night, and they are a very busy bunch of people. Um, Spooktoberfest was a booming success. They had over 1,700 kids at the haunted houses. Uh, they're in the midst of planning a Toys for You toy drive, which takes place at the fire hall and at uh, Red, a Red Apple. Um, we're in the middle of planning mistletoe magic at the Heritage Village. That's where we're going to have people adopt a building, put lights on the outside, and instead of having a parade down Main Street, we're going to have a 
horses and wagons and bonfire and hot chocolate event out at the museum itself and that would be December the 2nd. So if you know anybody that would like to adopt a building and put lights on it, they can do that anytime up until about the 2nd of December. Um, I think that's it. Thanks. <clears throat> you said December the 7th? It is the night that we're turning the lights on. Okay. Councilor Morio. <clears throat> um, on the October 25th, I was in the city at the Provincial Municipal Justice Advisory uh, meeting. Um, council through AMM will be receiving our annual synopsis report from what the committee's been doing. Uh, but it will come through the AMM versus here through the, due to the confidential nature of the committee. Um, but we've been through there primarily dealing with a lot of the Policing Service and Police Services Act review. So that will be forthcoming within that report that will be forwarded on through AMM to Council. Um, the 29th we had the Committee of the Whole meeting where we uh, took our first glance and stab at the budgets um, way ahead of last year. It was to council and administration for doing that. Um, and then throughout the various days, uh, conversing with uh, RCMP and various business owners of public uh, regarding the uh, increased thefts that are in the community, uh, which is, seems to be uh, almost nightly, which is very concerning to, as Councilor White said, the RCMP, your council, and everybody that's concerned. So um, we're looking at different ways of what we can do to combat that. Um, also, I'm in planning with uh, Sergeant Henson uh, regarding the citizens on patrol um, to get that group up and running, uh, working on getting the organization provincially registered and have our information ready to uh, present to uh, the committee uh, at a committee meeting where people can get the information on what the program's like and if they're interested in being part of the patrol to uh, sign up and, and what the requirements are and what type of training and all that would be involved. So. I'll look forward to hopefully having that uh, announced as to a date uh, for that in the next uh, week or so. Uh, if I can make a request, I'll put probably a request if we may be able to use the hall one evening or something like that. Uh, I'll talk to you, administration to see if we can coordinate that to facilitate that as a hopefully a meeting space big enough to hopefully fill the place. So when we can. Uh, have citizens come and hopefully participate in the, one of the potential solutions to combat the thefts and activities that are going on in the wee hours of the morning in the community. So, that's all I have. Okay. Deputy Mayor Antonin. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, in regards to RISE, we did have a RISE meeting, but we are discussing that further down, so I'm not going to waste not waste I'm not gonna badger that at the moment I will later on though as well as the 150 um, granting I'm sure that I'll have some words to say there um, just to mr. Poole in regards to that speed sign being moved from 13th back to third I'm not sure if it has or hasn't yet but it's on its way all right just just uh, want to follow up with that um, Patty since or Miss Henkelman since you are here today just a question in regards to the pool and water slide, but I think that maybe I'll talk to you about that one before you leave or at a, at another time. I'm not sure if it's worth talking about right at this moment. Um, Chamber of Commerce is working on a, a new strategic plan, and we had the opportunity of uh, our CAO, Mr. Kroll, being the uh, facilitator of that, and that was um, a good insight, and I think that the Chamber of Commerce will be making some great headway within the community and um, ongoing efforts should be prioritized and I think we're looking forward to uh, more successful conversations with Mr. Kroll on that regard. Um, as well had a policing meeting as Councillor White indicated. When, yeah, out of that um, discussion um, I think that was brought forward or, or the thought that crossed uh, my mind, I guess, and bringing up to council is there, there is crime in our community like every other community. I think that because we're a smaller community, we were able to see 
everything that is happening around us. However, I think that um, preventative measures should be taken as well as um, being reactive. We should be proactive. Um, so uh, I think that we, we as council should look at opportunities to uh, assist our business owners and what that what that really looks like I'm not sure but um, if we could offer some sort of incentive program for camera systems to businesses that are what our police force needs in terms of um, capabilities and the access to it I, I hear all too often that while well, they did have camera systems but we can't see the the suspects on there because of the quality of the system we the people who have them don't know how to use it we can't get the files off of it perhaps maybe we as council need to have a conversation with the with our policing partners and say you know these are the requirements um, and perhaps we could offer an incentive program for that um, in terms of being more proactive than reactive so maybe that's something that we can discuss at a, at a cow meeting um, and if that's a possibility i know that our budgets are tight not saying that we need to be paying for those systems for every business but if we can offer some sort of whatever that incentive might be to have systems that are compatible um, you know and universe universal throughout the community it might be a, an opportunity for us as well as um, <coughs> thank you to uh, councillor morio for uh, heading up the COPP program. I think that's going to provide um, beneficial assistance to our community. And uh, kudos to you for finding this, the time in your crazy schedule to to add one more thing. So I really appreciate that. That's all I have, Your Worship. Thank okay, you. Thank you. <clears throat> and I'll echo that. You know, um, with the crime that we've been witnessing here in the last little while, especially as it's increased has been quite a concern, you know, for all of us at this table and the community and RCMP and, and we really need to figure out how to get ahead of this. I know there's a lot of variables that go along with it, but uh, it's, at some point in time we need to, to get ahead and I know that there'll be a top <clears throat> topic of discussion with uh, Justice and what the uh, RCMP when we meet with them in, in Winnipeg and, and what it means for this community as far as how we get the right resources either with the RCMP uh, or what we do as, as a community. I think that COPP is, is, is a good start in the right direction. I know that some other communities that uh, Mr. Kroll has mentioned to me, Out West has implemented and uh, it's working well and they've actually seen some decrease in some of the crime rates. So definitely getting the people in the community involved, they're definitely stirred up right now. And uh, when we get this thing going along with that, uh, meeting with the public, I'm sure that we'll see people that want to be involved and they want to start to do something. But definitely, what Councillor White said uh, for people that are seeing any crime or anything that's happening, definitely report that to the RCP because they need that information. I know firsthand that there has been people that have seen things, but they don't report it. They think it's just going to lost ears, but they need all the help they can get from the community. <clears throat> and if we work together, I'm sure that we can overcome this. In, in time. Um, I had been away for the last couple of weeks, so uh, I don't have much to report. But one thing that I did want to mention um, in one of my meetings, not with municipal, municipal related, but um, with our business, and, and that was with uh, commercial cardboard. This is a big concern with a lot of businesses like ourselves that uh, they don't know what to do with commercial cardboard. And a lot of municipalities now are not even actually taking commercial cardboard from businesses. They got to figure out how what they're going to do with commercial cardboard themselves. And uh, <clears throat> our corporation actually is now giving that option to businesses like ours to actually ship it to a, a, a centralized location at a cost. And some of those costs are like six hundred and fifty dollars for one truck to go. So we know that this has been a big increase in cost to our taxpayers this year and we definitely need to get ahead of that because we can't afford to do that any longer because uh, commercial cardboard is just a huge expense and it's a big hit to our budget as we know this year so uh, I'm, I know that Mr. Poole has been working on uh, some changes to 
to that collection for uh, commercial <coughs> cardboard and recycling, but definitely we need to take a hard look at that and some tough decisions that, that lie ahead because um, I don't think we can continue on the way that we are right now as far as commercial cardboard goes. And that's it for me. Mr. Kroll, did you have anything you wanted to I uh, don't have a great deal to put in there. Uh, really, I've just been uh, attending some meetings uh, with some of the councillors and, uh, and with the staff. Um, yeah, just plugging away, trying to get things done. So. And, and I guess last note too, you know, I, I thank uh, uh, or Deputy Mayor uh, Wintori for taking care of anything while I was gone away and any of the meetings and, and so forth, and the rest of you to be attending all the meetings that sometimes don't work out so well, and uh, and you have to commit yourself to get away from your daily routines and jobs. Uh, but uh, as we know, it's important to all of us to be in, stay committed and, and involved. Okay, so moving on to, uh, go ahead, Councillor Erwin. Just in regards to cardboard, um, I mean, we're having that discussion now. We've had it, we are ha we're having the discussion in your report. We've had it, the discussion um, with administration and, and that sort of thing. I think that's something that we should um, move to the economic development side. I think there's opportunities that we can as a community look at for um, commercial cardboard, um, which I'm on that committee, so I can I can bring that forward and um, uh, with our staff or with the staff there, I think that we could look into some options that might be, perhaps it's it's viable to, to look at those and maybe we can get a report and a presentation on opportunities for commercial cardboard. It's just so council knows tomorrow the uh, the draft could new the new draft collection by the will be on the next committee the whole agenda so I've sent it to the environmental health uh, members just to review in Charles but uh, tomorrow it'll be up for council to see so that's my proposal on how we're going to handle our commercial cardboard our recycling and uh, waste collection so there's, there's quite a bit of changes in there. It's a, it's a read, <clears throat> but I guess just as for information, a lot of municipalities, you're right, have an outright not allowing uh, corrugated cardboard in the landfills. We, we are proposing to not do that quite yet. We're still going to try and uh, uh, deal with it in some capacity, but you'll see it tomorrow. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eight point one result the council authorized payment of the annual grant of eight thousand dollars to Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce, as was included in the two thousand nineteen financial plan to be used towards the chamber projects and operations. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor. Carried. <coughs> Result that the uh, result that council authorized payment of the annual grant of four thousand dollars as included in the 2019 financial plan to the Swan Valley Historical Museum, moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Mr. Cole, in the past we actually did like. Uh, a check presentation at a future council meeting when we did this. I don't know if that's something that maybe we can arrange. You want like a giant check? <laughs> Not a giant check. No, Tell us you're speaking. That still exists. I don't have <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> All right. 8.3 result of the updated statutory and holiday closure dates and hours at the Arena and Aquatic Center for 2019. Be approved, moved by Councillor <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Morial. Discussion, well, Councillor Gray. Are, are we bound for these for all time? I mean, we need to have some certainty. I, I understand that, and so I'd like to move on with it. 
but I'm not entirely happy with that. And I think, but I think it's part of the budgeting process mm -hmm. because the issue is cost. Right. But I, I, I'm not. Uh, there's a bit of an irony. Second one will recognize that I'm the guy who said we've got to control what we spend, but but these dates may or may not be things that we want to look at um, in terms of service. It, it just seems to me there are a lot of ways that we might want to have so things over. But anyway, but, uh, as long as we're free to open to revisit it at a later point, I'm, I'm fine with it for now. That way we have some certainty, and if we don't deal with it, we don't deal with it. But I'm, like I said, there are some days that I think are. I, I don't think days in the middle of the summer and for the pool are a big deal. I think days in the winter are more of a big deal for me. And I'd like to revisit it at some point. But I, I don't want to. There are things I'm worthy, willing to fight about and to slow down, and there are things I'm not, and this is not one of them. I just want to be is put on record. Short time horizon? That's right. Yeah. I just want to put on record that at some point, um, I, I think we want to discuss that in terms of service, partly as part of as part of the budget process, particularly, okay. so that they may be changed. But for the time being, absent change, I'm fine with them. And, and I guess in, in, a, in a town meeting that covers recreation, we could probably discuss that and look okay. into it a little bit. Sure. Curious. Okay. All in favor? <clears throat> it's carried. Okay. Uh, I guess um, I'm going to bring you a resolution or, or this is the discussion on the Mantable 150 grant. This so we don't really have a. No, isn't it? Sorry. 8.4. We just did 8.3 for 2019 statutory. Now you have to do 8.4 for 2020. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Council. Sorry. <clears throat> the result of the proposed 2020 statutory and holiday closure dates and hours at the arena and aquatic center be approved. Moved by Councillor. Be different. White. Council, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion, are they any different? Uh, one is that the 2019 is where we made some slight changes um, to the existing schedules and now I'm looking at the 2020 that's recommended. Yeah, I'm more concerned with 2020 because that, that, that was what I was talking about actually. I, I didn't realize we were dealing with 2019. I'm working through 2020 in terms of the budget and say, what is it we're providing for services so that these can deal with the same fashion. We visit, revisited 2019 here just in the last one. So exactly. So if we choose in the spring, you know, going through budget, if we want to change those, then we can make the necessary changes or have a new resolution for that. So. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Okay, 8.5, the Manitoba 150 grant. We don't have a resolution there, so I guess we just open up for discussion, or? Yeah, I um, wanted to discuss it, so okay. So we have a grant application that's coming due in it's due on Tuesday. quick time, so. Yeah, so we okay. just need some decisions to, so I can put the application together. I just need some idea on what people are thinking so that we can get that submitted on time. Okay. I had sent an email out lot yesterday, kind of an update on the meeting we had um, on Monday, um, just kind of where everyone else is at, the other municipalities. So it looks like, you know, the town is on it pretty much on its own for applying for the grant. The school division did ask, potentially, they want to potentially um, expand their indigenous day, which they did a daytime, and they're looking at maybe evening, so maybe partnering up for the evening portion. But other than that, everybody else is either on their own or um, looking at other community groups to apply. So. Council Moria. Um, so out of the meetings or through discussions, has there been any events brought forward by the public that we could consider versus just us coming up with stuff? The original meeting that was held, I mean, Stacy sent it out to you know, everybody on our list and there's businesses and organizations to everybody. There was, I mean, there was a few people that came. Um, there wasn't the public that was there at the very first meeting. Basically, their things were not to do it at rodeo because they wanted to bring people in um, at other times was kind of the big point. And not Canada Day, those were the things they really wanted to avoid. 
but there really wasn't any ideas that came forward at that point. Council, or Deputy Mayor and Tony. Um, in that regard, the, <clears throat> the week leading up to um, May 31st, thir 31st was um, one that was uh, proposed because the May 31st, it, the museum already has um, an event planned for the 31st, so it was uh, leading up to it. There was some uh, thought from the local co-op store to be partnering with their I can't remember how many years, 80, 50 years, 80 years, thank you, um, par partnering up with that and having something along those lines. There was the thought of community groups coming forward with um, cultural events. Um, so I, I think there are, some, uh, there are some really good ideas out there, and I think that those groups would spearhead them. Uh, Councillor Friesen, I think, was, would be more than willing to spearhead a few of them. Um, but yes, the first meeting was much more productive than the second. The second one was, um, and I was part of just um, helping to facilitate it, and it was um, it was a hard. The second one was much harder to control than the first one. Um, so I think that the second meeting was um, not as productive, in to say the least. Anyhow, having having said that. Oh, sorry. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. Uh, the second meeting. The second meeting. Anyhow, yes, second meeting. So I guess we need to decide to, as council, um, perhaps what we're doing with funding, right, Ms. Engelman? What we, what we want to propose or what we can commit to funding for, for this. I mean, there's our other um, smaller organizations that perhaps would add to the fundraising for funds, but I think ultimately um, we need to decide as, as council what we're going to commit to matching funding. And it's a 70-30 split, so you can apply for up to $70,000. Um, you'd have to match with $30,000 to get the full $100,000 grant, or the full $100,000 Right, and you're not guaranteed to get that either. No, no. Councillor Gray. I don't even think it's that complicated. I think we commit $30,000 or we can get community groups to contribute some portion of that's fantastic. But when do you get more than two to one? I, 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 I like it isn't even, it's not that complicated to me. We should commit $30,000. We're going to spend at least $100,000. It's a fantastic year. It's 150 years we're going to problem. I think. If the province is putting in 70%, we should do something about it. it, it you know, I, I said some suggestions. I, they're just suggestions. Whatever you, I, I don't care. I mean, I, I have a, a couple that I'm more fond of than others, but um, to me, that's, I, I don't know if there's a resolution. I, I'd certainly move that we set aside $30,000 for the purposes of a man of, for a man of 150. Um, I, I will say, um, I loved the idea of cultural events over the summer. I think that was a, uh, a and movies in the park and doing a bunch of stuff all together. I think that is a, a, a surefire winner to keep people around and to do things. Um, I, I, I have to say that I think that um, the idea that we wouldn't make the rodeo bigger is a huge mistake. It is singularly our biggest draw and if we can find one, a way of expanding it and, and for me that like I said the idea of having somebody who would draw people from around on the Thursday so they might stay on the Friday and the Saturday is such an obvious thing I can hardly imagine we wouldn't do it and it doesn't cost that much I mean we can you know for a, a reasonably you know, famous person and you're going to get all the volunteers required to move in a stage and bring on a star and yeah. look after the beer gardens and everything that goes along with it. Yeah, I'm going to that's, start by recruiting that, Philip Reason. That's <laughs> the hard part. Yeah. It is the hard part, but yeah. but that's, you know, I don't know. And these volunteers aren't paid, so we don't need to put them down as no. receiving money. But, 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 I mean, that is the hard part. I don't know if we could get a big star now. Like, it's already uh, November. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, depends what you mean by big. I mean, but a headliner. 
Uncle. <laughs> Deputy Mayor one time. Um, I, I agree 100% with um, a lot of what Councillor Gray has said. I think, though, that we can um, also look at other organizations, such as the Chamber of Commerce, to assist with uh, uh, maybe a, uh, the summer uh, summer event with our local businesses. So, business um, the days of summer, and have um, you know the Chamber of Commerce taking on a little bit of responsibility, and and other groups to help that. Uh, my other point is, contrary to the belief, $100,000 doesn't really go a long way. Um, I mean, it, it does and it doesn't, so $100,000 can be easily spent across the valley for a year-long celebrations as much as some other counselors feel. We're not spreading this across the valley. Like, this is going to be internal to Swan if they're not good to one person. Well, my thoughts are, if we're putting up $30,000 of community dollars or our own dollars, then it's within the town of Swan River, unless our uh, municipal partners are willing to join with us. And, and by it sounds what you said, it doesn't sound like they're gonna are willing to do that. Well, they're willing to join with us. They're just not willing to pay for okay. the privilege. And, and that seems to be a common theme, anyways. Go ahead. So both um, uh, Mitch Thomas Bozeman and Mountain are planning on putting in their own applications and okay. doing events, like I said in the email. Um, Minnetonis Bozeman's looking at that week leading up to Canada Day, making that their mm -hmm. event. And uh, Mountain, they have their meeting on Thursday, but they're looking maybe something with the Cow and Trail ride. So that's in August, doing something to uh, make that a bigger event. So they, they are applying on, on their own. We'll go back. You didn't finish. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I think that was the uh, the uh, most of my point. I did want to say, though, that if we could have a resolution on the floor, I, I think that Mr. Gray, our Councillor Gray, has brought it to the floor. I would second that resolution that we find $30,000. Um, should you renew your... Oh, <laughs> it's already on there? All right. That's that's all I have. Councillor Morio. Um, so, Patty, so just so it's clear in my head, like the application, do we have to have specific events outlined or is it just we have to? Yeah. Okay, so that's where we need some. It's like one of the things that I don't, I don't know, I read an email somewhere, like where the Christmas, Chamber's Christmas tree lighting thing, where you, instead of just hot chocolate, make it a, a bigger event uh, like a, like that, like it's hot dogs and for next year. hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. for, 20, yeah, for 2020. Yes. Yeah, like make it a little bit bigger and, and like exactly like that Corby leading up to the May 31st. Um, something like, like again, like on the rodeo, something like on the Thursday night or something like that. There's um, like with um, how our deputy mayor went to me, so it's like maybe task the chamber or some other business that want to join us where we can pool there some of the volunteers and they can come up with, but like the movie night, like a, a Friday night movie night popcorn in the park for the kids at the amphitheater there that do um, movies. Or movies. movies or something that like that. That way you can claim a lot of money that way. Well, I just wanted yeah. And I get, and in the short timeline, I think we can finalize some of those details with those organizations, the Ag Society and the Chamber of Commerce really quickly. and. and to get you in a, in a place where that application can be done. And I think that all of us as counselors are here to help you in any way we can to, to facilitate that budget, or at least I'll put myself out there that I can commit some time to assisting you if you require. Okay. I mean, even for Canada Day 150, like on Canada Day, even for like Manitoba 150, like we always run out of ice cream on Canada Day. You <laughs> can't have two grants. Line. If well, if we apply for the Canada Heritage Grant, which 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 we are going to do soon, then you can't apply for this one. And and also this one, you can't apply for something that's already in existence. It's for new, yeah, that's new, right. new, you. new, new creation okay, of a new event. Mobile. Mobile. So, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you could expand on Canada, but have to be a new initiative, yeah. something different. That's not part of what you're. Could be slushies instead of ice cream this year. Okay. <laughs> that reminds me, I have to ask you. Need, so. Councilor Gray. Okay. okay. If, if you need some help in terms of, if you decide to do the rodeo piece, um, I have some connections with Country Fest, and I'm sure we can find uh, people that we can connect us with pretty quickly. Like getting. That's the least of our work. I agree with Councillor Friesen. The biggest worry will be getting enough bodies to have back and make it 
a viable event. That's the bigger problem, not getting a name. Getting a name would be the easiest thing. Like we can do that by Tuesday. I also think by us putting forth, fronting up some money for it, that um, our community will have a sense of buy-in as well. So I, I don't anticipate that we will have a struggle for finding volunteers. And however, I mean, having said that, if you do need an extra volunteer and nobody shows up, I guess that guy's me. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, I got two volunteers. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. So do you want me to just kind of put together a plan and send it out in like the next day or so for you guys to look yeah. at and say yes, go, and then we'll... Do we yes. have authority to do a poll of the new squad as opposed to having a meeting? Uh, yeah, I, mean, we I think we that. do, don't we? If we just have the initial um, resolution tonight, uh, then the planning is really just a planning stage right. past that. Okay. Just from the consent of the council, the you know majority of the council. So with this uh, application, you know, there's been a few items that were kind of thrown out there. I think that we did discuss, or at one point in time, I thought I heard fireworks on the actual, you know, Manitoba Day or whatever it is. <clears throat> there was debate about what that day was, but we could still probably still do it as a new event. But um, my thoughts were like. How much written in stone are these? If if we do the application, all of a sudden we want to maybe add some things. I'm sure that that doesn't matter because, however, we spend the money at the end of the day. Or do you have to stick I think to the they, plan? The, 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 <clears throat> you'll tell me, but I think the actual thing says that you, they'll approve the project. So the project has to because you have to have measurables. And so, how would you right. move the measurables? Okay, they, and, they do, and that, and that makes sense. for adjustment, but it has to be within the the scope of your original plan. Right. Yeah. So. Because I guess what the what that plan looks like depends on what kind of money you receive. Because if you put thirty thousand and the province gives us fifty or whatever it is, then it changes it a little bit, right? So yeah, and I mean I've been trying to get some information, made some calls, can't get to talk to anyone, but we don't know whether they're going to say, okay, we like this one, this one, this one, or we're only going to give you ten of the seven you've applied for. You do what you want within that. We don't know what that's going to look like, but the approval will be. Um, and we talked about chamber, and, and we talked about you know who, what other groups. But I would hope that we would reach out to you know the kinsmen and, and the lions and all that as well, because they might want to be involved as well. So, but anyway, I think it's been a good discussion, Council Morial. Um, so we talked about like committing up to, up to thirty thousand. So did we want to commit it? Up to thirty thousand, or the full thirty thousand, like scalable to be what the problem is. Like, if we get to seventy thousand, or do we want to portion it to what we get? That's just a question. Uh, uh, to, could you answer that question, or or, or is it how, that's how the most? I don't my know, resolution was the thirty thousand. Right. We can scale back. Mm -hmm. what, it's it's a budget. Right. We can scale back. Um, but I think we should apportion thirty thousand dollars. We are going to spend thirty thousand dollars. We're expecting seventy thousand. If they don't give us seventy thousand, we'll we can make the decision then. We don't have to spend the thirty thousand. But we may say, okay, they've only given us thirty thousand, but we want to spend sixty thousand. We think this is fantastic, and we're going to spend the thirty, or we may not. We may even increase it. But for now, in order to make the grant work, we're we're committing that we have thirty thousand dollars. I see up to thirty thousand right. toward the Manitoba yeah. toward the Manitoba 150 grant opportunity. So I don't mind. I think the resolution's really good. Okay, so I'll read the resolution if there's any other discussion. <clears throat> Resolved that the town of Swan River provide up to thirty thousand dollars in funding towards the Manitoba 150 grant opportunity. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Further discussion? All in favor? Gotta get busy. <laughs> Number one. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for coming in tonight. Is there anything that we need to worry about in the lobby, Mr. Kroll? Or you took care uh, of it? No, actually, we have. Uh, you want to take a recess here right now? Yes. Uh, okay. We have a guest. Okay, we'll just take a recess. Patty. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, I think this is uh, 9.1. Councillor Delorier wants to be in on this discussion. I should have, while you're doing the 
So what are we waiting for? We're connecting with uh, Councilor Delorier. If we can, if not, then. Oh, it's got a message. I've texted him to uh, text me back if he's ready. Going to the message system. Okay. Okay, well, we'll uh, if he comes in, because I'm sure that we'll have discussion about this here. The result of the 2019 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy levy in the amount of $50,970 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor or Deputy Mayor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen? Yes. Okay. Discussion. Jason. Not too bad. Are you ready to uh, discuss rise? Yeah, I'm just going to get you on speakerphone. Can you hear me? Towards us. So, <laughs> Councillor uh, Deloria, I just read the resolution at, on <coughs> point one, and it's now uh, on the table for discussion. So, I ask for discussion. If you have anything, okay. Councillor Memorial. Um, so, it was alluded to a couple times in the meeting that Rise has had a meeting and stuff like that. Uh, where is Rise with sending, I guess, letters to the other municipalities to either pay up their full share or you get in the boot? Or has that happened or is it going to happen? I wasn't here, but I heard about it. The Bibera wouldn't tell me. Um, that was the thought or the um, plan was to call out for the 2019 year. Um, and allowing up until December 31st, there was conversation from one of our partners that it should be shorter. Um, so there is that talk. There was um, to be the resolutions in that regard coming forward to um, every council to have more direction from every, every council member, not just the board, um, to which I guess they aren't ready. I don't see them presented in here today. I think that we're just looking at the budgeted amount, but those will be coming. And yes, the to answer, long story short, to answer the question, it is the um, rises um, discussion that there that we will be, they will be, we will be calling out for the remainder of the 2019 budgeted amount um, to determine whether or not other municipalities are in or not in economic development. So, so that's their intention, but they're waiting for direction from each council, is what I heard, to either to proceed with that or to... Right? I think it, it goes along with a few other things, such as the school for direction, um, but it is felt that from the RISE board to... But, but for me, there's a, a, it's, this is a finite point. Is RISE going to put the ultimatum to the municipalities, either you pay up or you're out, or are they seeking advice or guidance from each municipalities if they should do that or not? I think that the guidance and advice is going to be coming from our municipality because others have put some into it. I, I mean, I can't give you a definite answer. I can't speak for the entire board, um, but the intention is to call out for the remainder of remainder or, or any of the 2019. I think Councillor Gray can explain that a little bit better. Well, it was not that piece, but, Gray. but I can tell you that my, the, the, the plan all the way through was that everybody pay their 2019 assessment. 
I, I'm when Councillor when Tony was was being very uh, circumspect. It was me that said, "Why in the hell would we give them till December the 31st? They've had 10 months. We we've been sort of waiting for something." But but and so uh, there's some, there's a bunch of issues about that. But but we're going to pay our amount. Mountain paid theirs right away. The other two chose to piddle around. Fair enough. So. If, if the rest of the, uh, of the rise board says December 31st, I can live with that. But quite candidly, not past December 31st. They either pay their amount or they're out. We already have a bylaw at rise about that. And that's the decision as far as I'm concerned. And, and, and um, for 2020, I think we have a different, we should talk about that here as well. Um, although I don't know, maybe we might want to do that in, a, in camera session because it's a planning thing. Um, but for 2019, you're either, for 2019, we're going to pay our fee and we're going to expect everybody else to pay their assessed value on something that was agreed by two representatives from each municipality. It's stunning that we could have councils who send two representatives who pass the thing unanimously and then don't pay. I mean, quite candidly, our council decided not to pay it. I think there's really only one of remedy for me. It would be astounding to me a representative who sent us an agent with presumably authority to bind us. And and um, I, I can't even imagine. Councilor Gloria, are you hearing everything? I'm hearing both yeah. Okay. Do you do you have a comment? Oh, um, I guess I'm just, in light of the fact that the rest of, I, I agree we've been in rise for, for, the, for most of 2019, we should pay our bill, but I'm wondering how we can structure it in such a way that if nobody else is paying their full share, then we, we need to fold rise up. But, and I, I, know, I know that the resolution as it is on the table doesn't really reflect that. But I want to pay it, but I don't want to be having this argument next June saying, well, we've been in for six months, we, we got to pay six months of 2020. Okay. <clears throat> Councillor White. I guess the question is, if we put our 50000 up, uh, can we, st and one of the goals was to hire a full-time person for an extended period of time, we offer them a job for three years. Now, if we put our 50 up and the others don't, doesn't that sort of... <laughs> hamstring us and from the relatives to being able to hire a person, a quality person for an extended period of time because all of a sudden we only have half the money in the budget, whatever the proportion is, so you can't do that thing. So that's a concern I have. Um, Councillor Gray. This is my proposal for this. Uh, for the um, 2019, uh, I, I don't think we have any choice. I, I think we're, we, we're now into the 11th month and we've been a party to it, I think we pay our assessment. I really would rather discuss in a, in a, either in, in a committee of the whole or in an in-camera session the alternatives because I, I think there are things we need to do going forward. I don't think we can, I, I couldn't agree with Councillor Delory more than to say we cannot go through this every year about whether people are in or out or piddling around. Either you're in and you're in for an extended period of time or you're not, I don't care. The town of Swanever is gonna do economic development, but we can't be perpetually worrying about whether or not everybody else is in or out. If they're in, we, all, we need them in for a long term. If they're not in, we need to set aside money in our budget to do it and let them go off on their own. They'll do whatever they do. But I, I, those outside of those already fairly contentious remarks. Uh, I don't think I want to say that publicly because it's going to be broadcast um, until we come to a decision. I, I think we have a duty to speak with candor about it and I think that's better done in camera. For the, for the going forward. Deputy Mayor Montoni. I couldn't agree more. I think it, it's always been a struggle with, with RISE and with the employment of the um, EDO or administration that we have there now, I find it um, very unproductive knowing that 
or not knowing that if you have a job or don't have a job. So how are you going to take on projects? How are you going to effectively do your job really well knowing that tomorrow you might not have a job because nobody is paying the their portion into it. So sometimes I think we got to look at, at the um, employees part. I couldn't agree more that, that I, th I think it's silly, I think it's foolish that we need to have this same discussion year after year, although this is, I'm new to this, but I, with speaking with Councillor Delorier every year, it seems that this has been a, a, a discussion. It, it shouldn't be, either we, we're in it or we're out of it. But I think that looking at the issue on the table of the 2019 year, we've spent a lot of time not deciding whether we were in it or out of it. So I think that it's our duty to pay our bill for it. And in terms of uh, Councillor White's comment, I think that um, it's in our best interest to pay our full 2019 amount. Um, just with the resolutions that are with RISE, that that in, would entitle us to uh, some, of, um, some of the reserves that if everybody else decides to be out, we have something that we can actually use to, to hire our own EDO or whatever that case looks like. So, but I don't think that's a conversation that needs to happen at this, at this time. I think that we just need to decide whether or not we're contributing to the 2019 budget. The rest will come in a further conversation. So to clarify, the other partners will be asked to make a decision by December 31st. Oh, I, I think that's a given that they're required to do that. And if they don't, I can only, uh, I, I've spoken to a number of the, of the board members at RISE. I would expect that there would be a, certainly a solid majority and probably even, a, probably even almost unanimous agreement that if you haven't paid, you're out. That's what I think is going to happen. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be stunned quite candidly. And, and it could possibly be sooner, but December 31st being the, the latest time possible. But the resolutions are there already. Okay. Councilor Delorier, do you have any other comments? You, you know, as, as I'm sitting here listening to this, and I, I'm, I think we, we have a resolution already on the table, already passed by council that said we would put money in the rise if, uh, if the other three municipalities are as well. That, that was our condition. We were in if everybody else was in. It's turning out that nobody else passed any other, you know, nobody else even met us at that level. The, the, the other two municipalities that aren't in, they could have easily passed resolutions that said we're in too as long as everybody else is. All it would have taken was everybody to do that. And we'd all be in, but they, they didn't. So as far I, I really don't. I guess you know I'm sitting here wondering why do we even need to pay this bill? Because the, what, what the, the decision is already made that rise will fold. They're already deciding to not be in for, for the requested amount. Rise is going. To, rise will fold, and and the money will get split up. Why do we need to put money in? The the, 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 the money that was spent in 2019 will come out of whatever reserve rides had, that would have been split up amongst the municipalities anyway. So I, I, you know, I'm questioning whether we need to pay this. Okay, Councillor uh, Gray. <clears throat> Just as I spoke earlier to say I could not agree with Councillor Delore more, I could not agree with Councillor Delore less on this point. <laughs> uh, with the greatest respect, Councillor, um, this is our bill. And if other people want to not be honourable, that is their choice. We can't force them to be honorable. But our council is. It is a commitment we made, we'll pay our bill, and then we'll move on. And if we want to withdraw, we withdraw. But we won't, we, how would we have been a party for 11 months and not pay our bill? That would make us look. What, what is the point of paying this bill if we're going to get the money right back? Well, that was why we were waiting, but, but I think at this point, we're too late to make that argument. I think we pay it and and go through the process. That's my view. I, you and I, I know we, we've had a lengthy discussion with this, so I know that we disagree on this point, but you and I, um, I view... I'm worried that we get stuck in a, another, you know, if we get stuck in another year now, 2020 will be rolling right around. Well, you're having the same argument in 2020, and it's a question. 
quagmire we'll never get out of we, we, we don't of course we don't want to be the one to say okay this isn't working we need to end it but at some point you just have to okay i, I don't know councilor morio sorry <clears throat> uh, so correct me if i don't understand this right um if, if we pay this bill rm mountain has paid the bill so we're the only two municipalities that would have paid the bill um rise would be sending letters to the two other municipalities going pay the rest of your balance or we're enacting your bylaw that are out we've already enacted it we're just so so through that process so that would just leave us as the town of swan river and the rm of mountain as the two remaining members of rise to either continue with the organization or wind it up and it would be only any remaining assets or whatever would be only distributed between those two remaining that's parties exactly. that's exactly it so so right now the only one who is entitled to reserves is mountain councillor white sorry we had an agreement with another uh, RM a while back, I think relative to an airport, and there was monies left over, and we never got our money back. And I'm a little concerned that, and I'm, is there a mechanism is it in writing somewhere if there's a devolution of the entity, does the money put back proportionate to the numbers of people who gave it? Because if that's not in writing, I don't worry we may not get it back, and we didn't get it back from that other group. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoy. What Councillor Mario said is 100% correct. What Councillor White said, um, there is that is all stated with the new resolutions that bylaws that were put forward by Rise um, was exactly that because that was the fear and who was going to be entitled to what and what proportion, what uh, proportion, etc. And that was was all determined on the 2019 levies that were to be paid, um, and I once again will strongly say that it's in our best interest to pay this bill. Councillor Morio. No, uh, Councillor when Tony clarified it. That, um, Thank you. This may <clears throat> it's up. Would it, if the other two municipalities don't pay, then it's up to the two remaining to either it's wind up or first, continue. First, the other two would have to be removed. And that would be through an internal process to right. rise. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then there would be the decision between the remaining two to either continue with the current assets or dissolve yes. rise and distribute the assets amongst the two remaining that's correct. One of the reasons I don't want to talk publicly is there's a process I think mm -hmm. that they would be able to invoke that would salvage for them their share of the money, but we'll talk about that. Councillor Delorier. What, what is the process for removing a RISE member upon failure to pay their bill? Do, just, uh, I, I, does the entire RISE board vote on whether whether that, that mechanism gets executed, or is it just the remaining members? Uh, how, many, how many members does RISE need to make quorum to, to even, you know, if they need to pass a resolution saying Mountain and, or Minbo and Swan Valley West are out, can they do that without uh, Min, uh, Minbo and Swan Valley West members there? Um, well, I think the quorum, as far as I recall, and I haven't looked at the bylaws in a while, but I think the quorum is five. Um, I think we will have six minimum um, present uh, and the mechanism in the bylaw is if they haven't paid their bill and a demand is sent, they, their, um, their membership is vacated when the termination date comes up. <coughs> That's my recollection of the bylaw. So there, there's eight RISE board members, right? Uh, nominally, yes. So if if they're vacated upon not no non payment, the the remaining board members don't even have enough quorum for rise no, no. function. It's fifty percent plus one. It, it, so reason I said five was because there are eight. So fifty percent plus one would be five. Does, does, does the does the bylaw actually say fifty percent plus one, or does it does it enumerate an actual number? I don't know off the top of my head. Well, I think that makes a big difference. Do, do we have the bar prize bylaw somewhere? 
So if, if we're looking for any more information, if council wants to table this, we can, we have the choice to table it to our next meeting. But we need a motion for that now. I'll True. I'll speak against that. <coughs> I wanted to do. To find the information that we're seeking right now, if that's contingent on a person's decision, then we should have that. And I don't know how quickly we can find that information. Councilor De uh, Delorier? Are you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm still there. I didn't hear your question. I was just asking if council wants to consider tabling this until the information that you're seeking to make the proper decision. Um, I guess I would like to know how the mechanism exactly would work as far as removing uh, member municipalities from RISE and get some assurances that that would happen. Okay, so you want to make a motion to table or, or? Sure, I'll make a motion to table. And I, I, I guess, you know, I, I, I don't know if you can get a, a letter from the RISE board or a resolution from the RISE board stating that they would execute upon December 31st or whatever the, whatever the triggering mechanism is for the clause to remove members that they would in fact enforce that clause. Okay. Do we have a seconder on the motion? Seconded by Councillor Morio. So on the question to table to our next meeting to find the information that we need to make this decision. Um, will, will Rise have a meeting between now and our next meeting? Call, uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Not that I'm aware of. Considering the magnitude and importance of the discussion, I would encourage them to have an emergency meeting. Go ahead. When a motion to table is given, it's supposed to be just voted on. Oh, you don't, yeah, that's not right. It's not to be right. Okay, so all in favor of the motion? Uh, yes or no? I'm in favor. Okay, against? It's carried, so I think we'll discuss at our next meeting. <clears throat> 9.2. Councillor Deloria, are you going to stay with us? Uh, yeah, I guess I, uh, I could, sure. Whereas the Council for the Town of Swan River does hereby agree that the recruitment of medical professionals is vital to the future of the Swan Valley and its residents, and whereas despite provincial responsibilities for the provision of health care, there is a need to continue making contributions towards the recruitment of doctors and other medical professionals in order to provide proper health care to local residents. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan, Council of the Town of Swan River does hereby agree to the following. A per capita levy of up to $16 for the next three years, 2020, 21, and 22, a portion of the municipal levy to be used for payment of a part-time employee to devote his or her time to recruit doctors and other medical professionals for the Swan Valley. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Morio and Councillor Gray. Um. Out of all the differences in the valley, I think this is one issue that I think pulls us together, um, where there's little debate amongst uh, our councils. Um, but knowing uh, with the upcoming projects that are potentially um, on the horizon with the medical services that's related to recruitment and retention um, with either the, the, our contributions or whatever for the CT scanner and uh, whatever expansion at the clinic and stuff like that, there would be a need for funds or whatever for that, that um, it's better to have it in the bank than it is to try and search for it later and from there, so. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gray and Councillor White. I'll defer to Councillor White. Councillor White. Well, first, I agree completely with your comment and hopefully we can find somebody in government who would take that message 
to uh, Minister Friesen, or if we knew somebody from government. Uh, it, it, it's probably the only thing that we are united on. I, I appreciate so much you've said there, Councilor Morio, that we agree on. And not only are we united in it, we need it. And uh, hypothetically, uh, it's going to make us a, a hub from, from an economic perspective as much as a health perspective. Thank you. Councilor Gray. I thought you deferred. I did. Deferred didn't mean I'm not going to speak. It meant I let you go first. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, uh, Councilor Delorier. Oh, that's all right. Okay, go ahead. I hope I'm not interrupting somebody. No, I, you're good. I, I, don't know, I don't necessarily have a problem with the majority of it, majority of it but the uh, question on who, who would this part time employee work for? Well, in, in the, go ahead, Councilor, uh, Mr. Kroll. Uh, if I could just answer that, this, uh, this uh, resolution was lifted 100% uh, from the previous resolution. It's just come up due, so uh, uh, any changes, you're welcome to make any changes. I, I didn't uh, completely understand the last part of it, but I didn't know it was in the old one, so. Uh, Councilor Gray. I have um, a number of concerns. The first is, um, we, uh, and again, we have no end of challenges with our partners. I, I thought we'd agreed in principle not to go piecemeal into partnerships with them because that was not helpful. Um, I have no problem with setting aside money for doctor recruitment within the town. So whenever if we're going to hire somebody or give somebody within our staff, uh, you know, we're going to authorize a change in, in, in uh, job descriptions so that the CAO has administrative control over somebody. I have no problem with that being part of the budgeting process. I, I actually think that would be a fantastic plan. Uh, and I would rather do it that way than as a partnership, unless we're going to have some form of meaningful partnership. Because it may be, let me put this, I have no faith or trust that our partners will not hold us up to ransom on this as they have in every other issue up to this point. And in the result, I, unless we're prepared, unless we actually get into negotiations with them and have their commitment to do something and have written terms of reference that they won't back out on, which they've already done on three prior occasions, unless we had that, I could never support this as a partnership. Secondly, it, it minimizes our negotiating strategy. You recall the meeting we had in Minnetonans where said we never give away our positions. We, we need to think through how we're going to negotiate the totality of pieces. Uh, I'll give you an example. We have asked um, two of our three partners in the doctor recruitment process for resolutions agreeing to a process to decide what we can agree on in terms of valley-wide recreation. Not agreeing to valley-wide recreation, not agreeing to sharing costs, agreeing to have a study to decide on the process. They've yet to even bring it to their council tables, let alone pass it. How would we ever go into partnership with that? I had a, my first law partner, Mr. Bjornsson, used to say that um, you should never go into partnership if you think you need the partnership agreement. People do. Things happen and you need a partnership agreement later. But, but if you start out by saying, let's figure out all the ways I have to make sure I have to protect myself against the guy I'm dealing with, don't go into business with them in the first place. So I would rather we defer this, um, and then we can only table at one meeting, but, and, and get some feedback from the other people, and perhaps start the process of ongoing negotiation. Because like Consul Delore, the first question I would have is, we're authorizing the hiring of somebody. Who's it going? Who that is that person going to report to? How are we going to control it? So I, I my, I'm going to move tabling of this as well to the next meeting so we can get some of that answer. Okay. So we have a motion on the table. Does do we have a seconder? Deputy Mayor Lentoni, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Councilor Delorier, your vote. <clears throat> Sorry, Councilor Delorier, where were your vote with that then? Yeah, I'll vote in favor of tabling. Thank you. All right, 
Result of the Town of Swan River Draft cons Consolidated Financial Statements for the year end December 31st, 2018 be approved and the independent auditor's report thereon be received. Moved by Councillor <coughs> Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, I go, I, I, I'm sorry, I moved it. It's carried. Resolved that the draft public sector compensation disclosure scheduled for a year end of December 31st, 2018 be approved and the auditor reports thereon be received. Moved by <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Favor. I keep forgetting you're there. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General checks, account checks number 25174 to 25236 for a total of 154,312 and 20 cents. Payroll checks, account checks number 4545 to 4553 for a total of 112,604 and 33 cents. Moved by Councillor Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, questions, Councillor Memorial. Um, check number 25228 uh, to Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission. I just need confirmation that that number is based on the old formula, not the wacky new one that's from the commission itself. Uh, I can't guarantee that, but I do know that Terry is a stickler for sticking with how it is down on our rules, so. It would be what's written in the agreement. Yeah, yeah. the agreement has not changed. Okay, so it's, it's not their budget request amount that they had put forward then? If that's what's not in the agreement, then no. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Further discussion? Lunch. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> in favor. Just if you could note me as abstaining on that one. Resolve that financial statements for the nine months ending yeah. September the 30th, 2019, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor. Um, well, I have one question. I have no question moving it, but I, I do have one question. Okay, I just about need it. a seconder. I'll second it. Okay, uh, Councillor Gray. Discussion, Councillor Gray. It's for you to, Mr. Kroll, that you may not know this, but. My quick mathematics shows that we're in good shape in terms of not going over expense, where our expenditures should not exceed our revenues based on the projections as far as, far as I can tell. Right. So we're, we're not gonna have another deficit. But we don't know that yet because we, don't, we can't project in the future, but on these numbers, it seems likely we will not have another deficit. Yes, based, based on the numbers that I've seen and based on my discussions with Terry, yeah. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 11.1. 1. <clears throat> Resolved that bylaw 12, 2019, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish the maximum speed limit for the highways or portions of highways for which the town of Swan River has jurisdiction, be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor Gray. Um, is this the same as before? Is there something added or subtracted? Because there's, go ahead. Uh, no, there's a, there's additions to uh, basically before everything was fifty, right? So there's a map if you scroll down, yeah. And uh, that was presented to council uh, several meetings ago, where we had Parkdale and Parkview Drive going to 30 because we had a recreational facility in the center inviting people to cross the road. So council asked us to be consistent wherever else that is in town that that happens. So we included uh, a portion of Crescent Drive, River Park Drive, 6th Avenue North, and uh, extended 7th Avenue North across from the Legion Park to where there's a recreational facility across from uh, residential houses where they have to cross the road, we moved them to 30. <clears throat> okay, I wasn't present for that because I live on one of those and I'm not in favor of it being 30. It's been marked 30 for quite a few years, I believe, right? I don't know if it's been signed. 
I don't know. It was in the bylaw. The, the bays have been in the bylaw for a while. Now. Well, I would speak against it then. <laughs> but I, I, I don't mind first reading because first reading is just notice about what we're doing. So I don't mind about that. I'm giving, telling you that that is one issue. The map is different than I don't see, um, unless I'm missing something. I'm just going to see. Oh yeah, no, it is what it is. Okay. Um, there was some discussion before about Third at Third Street. I, I don't know if their amendment for that is coming forward, but I'm, I, I'm not. I would be keen on that. And the other thing is, most of many communities have a change so that the school zone things are only during certain hours or certain months. Um, I don't know if that was debated the last time, but to me that seems obvious. And I don't know why we would leave it at 30 at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you can't change it hourly in Manitoba. You can only change it seasonally. Mm, you can have it between, at least Winnipeg and other cities have it between 8 and 5. They, they sent a package to us that we had to read oh, before we made adjustments. So they've changed the... Well, and that, that was, we can, we can change it seasonally but we can't change it uh, during the hours of the day. We can't say till 9 o'clock and then after 9, it's a different speed or anything. So how did the other municipalities do it? Mr. Grandfather did it, did they? This is new new legislation, though, yeah. is it not? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Son of a... Councillor Moore, yeah, we should have raised it before. Yeah, so, so just for Councillor Grease's um, benefit, because since he wasn't here when this was initially talked about at the Committee of the Whole, this is a result of all municipalities in the province having to redo their speed bylaws as a result of traffic, the traffic board authority or, or something, correct me if I'm wrong, that all municipalities have to have speed bylaws within their municipalities. So this is a formality to get us back up to speed where we were, because uh, it was as of September 1st um, when that came about that everything, unless a municipality had a valid bylaw, all speeds Defaulted. Defaulted back to, to, to 90. Yes. Yeah, so. Councillor White. Do you have any idea what this will cost you relative to putting up new signs and labels, whatever it's going to take? I don't have any estimates on costs off the top of my head between three and four thousand dollars. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Gray. So right now Gray. there are no speed limits in Swan River. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, no, they automatically uh, revert in. To um, 50. To 50 in, in yep. urban areas. And uh, uh, Swan River is designated as an urban tax. And at one time, I'll add that we didn't have the authority to change the, you know, the, the, the speeds in, in our municipality. But new legislation over the last five years have, has enabled us to do that. And this is just the next step in that. So, Okay, okay further discussion? All, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Wintone. And just looking at, at um, being consistent, and I'm not say, suggesting that <clears throat> it, it, it is something that we need to do. If we look at Riverview Drive, it's no different than a, than maybe a bay, um, one of the bays, because it does have a play structure in the center of Riverview Drive in that green space. I'm not, I'm not saying that we do. I'm just bringing that to council in terms of wanting to be consistent that that might be one that needs to be consistent as well okay. because there is a play structure there. We can get over second reading. You can notate that. Okay. All right. For the discussion, Councillor Delorier, anything to add? No. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Yeah, Opposed or it's first reading? Okay. It's carried. <clears throat> Resolve that pursuant to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council going to committee. Are they here for a reading? No, no, no. And close the meeting to the public. Uh, moved by Councillor uh, Friesen, second by Councillor uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. We have employee relations and contract negotiations to discuss. All in favor? It's carried. In favor. Okay, thank you. Result CAO and committee be authorized to recruit, interview, and hire an assistant chief administrative officer according to the job description presented in camera. 
we can as amended as, as, amended. as amended and further that the selection committee should include two counselors and the CAO moved by Deputy Mayor with Tony seconded by Councillor White discussion all in do, favor do, well just there's two things <clears throat> do, do we really want two counselors do you want only one I mean I don't know. well it's just that I go and get in a car accident generally your assistant okay. CAO right becomes you the win, CAO you, you already won the argument yeah. so you've been arguing <laughs> you might you might convince me to vote against it yeah there were two things that I that we talked about in camera that should be added the first is a salary range and I'm going to suggest yeah, I know you said fifty thousand I'm going to say fifty to sixty thousand dollars because I, I don't think you're going to get somebody you want for less than fifty so let's put a range okay and uh, it at for a two-year term okay because I don't I really think we want to wait till we have a finalized thing before we hire people on a permit. So we're going to, you're going to amend that uh, resolution then? Yeah. Is that a big enough range, like is that a big enough range to recruit? I, I think so. I mean, the assistant CIO generally starts as, there. it's like an apprentice type thing, right? I'm good. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that salary range that you don't need more range. Uh, I don't think so. I mean. Yes, uh, both of you is already the all you needed. What's that? Yes, see, I'm <laughs> sorry. How can you guys like Just tell me when we can refresh that. Lawyers. Well, no, it's made by the word. <laughs> Councilor Delorier, do you have anything to add to that? I'm having trouble hearing, so I'll just stay silent. <laughs> we can okay. hear you. Uh, I wouldn't mind sitting on that committee myself. I don't know if anybody else wants to. I would like to. Councilor Gray? But I, I, I'm certainly prepared to defer to, to other more experienced counselors. Right. I'm up to my arses and alligators. I would, I'm not taking it away, but I would throw my name in the hat to okay, be go part ahead. of that hiring Done. process. No, I don't want to take it away. It's all good. It doesn't, we can still lean on you if we need help. It's all good. So. It's all good. I still so support her. I, I did. We can actually name them in the resolution. The mayor and the deputy mayor. Unless Council Gallery, unless you want to take time off work to do it. No. There. That's fine. Everyone's happy. Design in the world because you lose it every hour. Look how many they sell. <laughs> that's why they, that's part of the whole poppy drive. That's how they make money. Yeah. That's, I love it. I, I only bought it with five or six, all right. I got a type of bad. I went and just grabbed one now because I had no money in my pocket. I wouldn't do that now. Tell her. I just threw 20 bucks in there yeah. and then just. Take all your money. Exactly. You got to watch your store. Yeah. <laughs> well, we used to. They, they yeah. didn't bring us. Sit, 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 sit. Look. We have one. Derek's bringing a gift. For us? Food? For you. Well, um, could you read that over? Because I can't. Oh, shoot. It makes sense very right now. I can't. Resolve. <laughs> you don't need to? Of course, you make me reopen it. Resolve that the CEO and committee be authorized to recruit, interview, and hire an assistant chief administrative officer according to the job description presented in camera. Oh, this is the same thing? No. Yes. And further that the... This, you need to refresh. There you go. I thought I did. Oh, here we are. Result of the CAO and committee be authorized to recruit, interview, and hire an assistant chief administrative officer according to the job description presented in camera. And further, that the salary range be between 50000 to 60000 
and also that the position be for two years and that the selection committee should include Mayor Jacobson, Deputy Mayor Wintoni, and CEO No. Does that sound fair? That's I think so. The shit out of me. I would just add a Why are we limiting the position to two years? <laughs> I'm sorry if we talked about it already. We did. We did. It's my fault. I didn't do it loudly enough. We're in the middle of reorganizing our entire structure. I expect it will be a continuing position, and when we advertise, I expect to say this is a term for now, but that we will. We expect it to be made permanent, but we're in the middle of re redesigning our entire process. Let's assume for the sake of this discussion that we design it with an assistant CAO or a deputy CAO, then the position will become permanent. But let's assume just the opposite, that we decide, okay, that doesn't work for us because of the size or we're diminishing or whatever. I don't, do we re really want to create a permanent position okay, while we're in the I, middle I, of it? I can go with this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Morio. Um, I would just be an amendment here where it says um, also that the position be for two years, I would no, say a two-year two term. term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not limiting it to two years, it's a two-year oh, yeah. term. Position yeah. B for two-year terms, okay, so we can amend that. No, two-year term. Yeah, two-year two 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 year term, sorry. A right. two-year term. A two-year right. term, okay. <clears throat> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. You'll fix that. Yeah, I've already made the change. Okay. There. Result of this regular meeting and council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Morio. All in favor? Carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.